So picture your life, every moment of it, from the moment that you were born till right now where you're seated, this time. Imagine your life as a book. The very beginning is your first moments as you're just trying to figure out what happened in life as a newborn, and every single moment, every page is documenting every action, every word, every thought, everything that's happened to you. It has this book, well, it has everything in it. So the good times, the beautiful ones, the ones where your, your child walked for the first time or said your name, the incredible moments where you said, I, I do. The amazing ones where you had your first job and you were so excited you were going to conquer the world. And, and this book also has the other moments. The ones where the pages are stained with your tears and your blood. Times you've been hurt and wounded. Times where you wondered, is, are there people that care about me? What's my next moment? Am I going to survive this? The moment you heard of someone's health diagnosis. The moment you heard that your mom had died. The time that you heard that, no, we no longer need you. In every single moment is this book, and it's your life. What does today say? What does this book say about you? Now, it's been a a joy for me as a pastor to be able to read the obituaries, the condensed version of that book for people as we, as we have their funeral services here. And I've noticed something about obituaries. They say the achievements. They say the best parts of this book, don't they? They say the joys and the things that this person and their family were proud of. The one that you want to shout to the rooftops about. They never have the other stuff. And I've wondered when I say them and when I hear a sermon about people, I only hear the good things about their life. And I wonder, they, they're so good, they're so perfect, this, this picture that I get from obituaries and even funeral sermons, oftentimes I'm like, did they even need a savior? Because apparently they could walk on water and everything seemed to go great. They must have had the storybook life. But we know better, don't we? There's so many questions that happen in life and when this book is written and the page that's just started for today in your book, where's it going to end up? Will today be an amazing one? What will you write in this book and what will life write for you today? Questions come, don't they? One of the biggies that we don't even dare to ask, actually, it's such a huge one. As we've been in our teaching series, we've been saying, you know what? As people of God, we can ask questions. So this teaching series has been questions welcome. That it's not a bad thing to have doubts. It's not a bad thing to ask questions about God and faith and life. And it's not a bad thing to say, God, where are you? That we can ask that of each other. And guess what? Maybe even as a church, we don't always have all the answers. And it's okay. And so we come with questions. And one of the big ones we dare not even speak most of the time is there, though. And I hear it usually, usually at the very end. It's this. What happens when we die? Was I good enough? Did I do enough? Pastor, what does, what does heaven look like? Am, am I going to be there? It's one of the deepest ones for us. Well, thankfully, we have movies and cartoons and comics and uh, TV shows that tell us what heaven looks like, right? And they don't, they don't, they're not wrong at all. They're giving us exactly what we need. And that typically, when someone dies, what do they tell us? You see, it's usually a tunnel or a light. And once you get to the end of that tunnel or the light, what is there? What do we see? Come on, you know this. It's a gate, right? This gate. I love this because the, the, the artist wanted to make sure we knew it was heaven, so they wrote it, heaven. I always wonder, like, when you get to heaven, will the sign be there? Ooh, thank you. I'm guessing it won't. I'm guessing it'll be that evident. 
But what's interesting about this one, in every account that I see or that jokes tell us, is the gate to heaven open like this or is it closed? Ooh, we want it to be open. It was a good guess, but almost every time I see it, closed. That as we get at the end of our life, after we've breathed our last, after that last page is written, because guess what? I hate to tell you this, but someday, every single one of us here, every single person breathing on the face of this earth at some point is going to breathe their last. And at some point, they will, as Scripture tells us, be face to face with God. What will that look like? Will today be that day for you or for me? Because someday it it will. Will the gate be open? Will it be closed? Well, movies and television tells us it's going to be closed. And who is outside of the gate of heaven? Whenever you get there, who's sitting there? St. Peter. That's right. You know this because it's right there in the book of Revelation. No, it's not there, actually. So in accounts that we see in media, it tells us the gates are closed. It tells us the gatekeeper's there, Peter, or someone. And what is Peter looking for? He's looking to see if your name is on the list. It's like heaven is the hottest nightclub, and you're just hoping and praying, and and you're wondering, is my name there? And in every account, you're just curious about that, and not just curious, kind of nervous about that. Maybe very nervous about that. Because that's the question, right? Is there a list? Is our name on it? The Bible talks, and Revelation specifically talks about, did you hear that in chapter 5 here? A, A scroll. And no one is worthy of that. And then in chapter 20, it talks about God himself opening books. And one of them, yes, is your book, the book I talked about, the book that has every moment of your life. It's called the Book of Deeds. And in it has the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so God sees that at the end. Is it in this gate? Is Peter there? And will we be good enough? I want you to think about those pages that those memories of things that you wish you could just forget. They're in there. And now what? Because in every account I see of heaven in our media tells me I, to get my name on the list, what do you have to be? Good enough. You have to do enough. You have to get to Sunday school enough. You have to sing the right songs. You have to give enough financially. You have to give your time and talents, of course. You have to, you have to pick up puppy dogs from the road. That's what you have to do to get into heaven. You have to be good. But what's the scale there? What's good enough? Is it because I didn't help that homeless person on the side of the road? Does that mean I'm not good enough? But I, but I did these other good things, and now does that balance the scale? How does this work? Well, let's watch about what what these moments might be like. Someone has envisioned this in a video of this scale. Next. File, please. Mm -hmm. Some lying, some stealing, and some acts of kindness here and there. I tried to live a good life. Well, let's see how good. This way. Next. Bio, please. Okay, I admit it. I did a lot of bad things. Yes, I see. But I've done good things too, you know, to offset the bad things. Like, one time, I cheated on a test, but then I cleaned up trash in the park. Mm Mm-hmm. That should balance out, right? Let's find out. This way. 
That should have balanced out, right? It should have balanced out. Next. Bio, please. Impressive. Oh, yeah. I devoted my entire life to making this world a better place. I dug wells in Africa. I donated blood every month. And I ran an orphanage in India. I mean, I just wish I could have done more. Mm-hmm. And is this your subscription? I only read the articles. I only read the articles. I only read the articles. Next. My mom goes to church. I was baptized as a baby? Take American Express, right? Next. File, please. Whoa. Somebody's been busy. Well, let's get this over with. Is that what the moment's going to feel like? You're ready, and you have a file this thick in that book. Because what Revelation tells us, God has that book of deeds, and it's all there. But then Revelation talks about another book that God has, and it is a book that has names on it. But here's what the kicker. John, the apostle, this disciple, he's an old man. He has a vision that God gives him of heaven and a new earth, we're, we're told. And he pictures it, and as heaven unfolds, he says, well, Peter is there, but Peter isn't named. Peter is, did you catch that? With the myriads of myriads, with the thousands upon thousands upon thousands, the countless people. And as John encounters heaven, actually there is not just one gate, there are gates on every single side of heaven. And they're not closed. There's no gatekeeper. The gates are wide open. And yes, angels are there, but they're watching and singing. And so is St. Peter, along with the rest of the people that God has made holy and good. But they're not faced outward, ready to pounce on someone and say, are you good enough? That's not how that scale works. No, what he tells us is that all at once, all of the, them, including the angels and all these saints, are faced inward to the throne. And who's on the throne? God himself. And he, he hears this, and he hears that there's another book that's coming. There's a book of deeds, but then there's this book of life. And he's told, no one is worthy. So when I hear the question, am I good enough? Well, the answer is no, you're not. You can't do enough. You can't attend church enough. That's not what this is about. What is it about? Let's find out. Let's watch this. Sorry, um, I didn't know he was with you. Okay, step on the scale. Not you. Him. Hey, wait a minute. That is totally not fair. That's why it's called grace. Next. What is it about that there's no scale that says we're going to be good enough because that's not the case. We can't be. But Jesus took the place for us on the cross. And what John sees in heaven in this new vision is something so profound and life-giving that you need to hear this. He hears no one is worthy to open this book of life where our names could be on it. And so he weeps uncontrollably, we're told. He can't stop until someone says, look, it's the Lion of Judah. And he expects this regal, amazing animal to come, this Lion of Judah. And he looks, and it's not a lion, it's a... It's a lamb. And it looks like it's suffering, it's bloody. And someone says, look, it's the Lamb of God. 
and the saints, Peter. And everyone says, this is the one worthy. And they break out in song. Where's their attention to the one who gives everything? I don't know what heaven looks like. Jesus himself says, I go to prepare a place for you, this Lamb of God, the only one worthy, the one that took our place, by the way. And he says, I go to prepare a place for you. Your name is on the list, by the way, is what he's saying. And I don't know what it looks like. Does it look like this? I think it does. Yeah, Lambeau Field. You're welcome, Packer fans. The Holy Land. Thank you. Someone after the first service said, wow, a picture of hell before heaven. (laughs) Thank you, Denny Nelson. No, it might not be like this. I don't know what it looks like. Is it like this or is it like the more traditional one? Is it a room? Is it a mansion? We don't know. But we know who will be there. We're promised. Promised that Jesus himself goes to prepare a place And now here's the things that we see aren't there. There's no more suffering. Those pages that are tear-stained and blood-stained, they're gone. And God himself will be there, wiping every tear from our eyes. There'll be no more death. What will happen when we die? Jesus himself takes our place on the scales of what we've done and says, come with me. The gates are open. And so what what will the page say today? This new page of life for you. Would this be the day you meet our Savior? Well, today is the day for us to help others know that this promise is for them, that it's not about being good enough, that we can't. It's about the one, the only one who's worthy, Jesus.